interesting stuff, but unfortunately, it's, uh, we cannot cover them in this kind of elementary physics classes. So I hope you can uh, have this classes go through the like say modern physics, where you are good, you will have a lot of very interesting and funny phenomena you are going to start with. Not like here, you always start with some objects moving on the inclined plane, but <laughs> it seems quite uh, stupid. Uh, <coughs> Okay, so first we still have some interesting things. Let's do it. Okay. Geosynchronous satellite. So there is one kind of satellite, okay? They are launched into circular orbits above the Earth's equator, so they are synchronous with the Earth's rotation. What do you mean by synchronous with the Earth's rotation? So that means they remain fixed or hover over the point of the equator. So basically it says that the rotation of the satellite match the rotation of the uh, Earth. So it's always above one point of the Earth. So if you happen to stand here, you are going to see that the satellite is not moving, it's always above your head. Okay, but actually it's rotating, but the Earth is also rotating. And we are going to see that for this kind of satellite, it has to be in a particular orbit above the equator. So there is a required height here for the satellite. It cannot be higher than that height, it cannot be lower than that height. Otherwise, it wouldn't be in the same pace with the Earth's rotation. So let's see how can we calculate this height and the uh, required velocity on this uh, orbit. Okay. So again, we have something to use like this. Okay. If we look at this problem, we're always going to use uh, Fc equals to Mac. Okay, that's our fundamental equation for all the satellites. The gravitational force provides the centripetal acceleration. Okay, this will be straightforward. On the other hand, we know Fc equals to this. And AC equals to this squared over R. So if we substitute these two into the first equation after canceling the mass, we get, combine this, we get uh, G and E over R equals to V squared over R squared over R. And then it becomes uh, C F E over R equals to V squared, right? Okay. So first we can get this simplified equation for the satellite. Here, one thing is is this R equals to the radius of the Earth R E. For that, okay, for this kind of satellite, it's not close to the Earth's surface, okay. So here you shouldn't suppose it's close to the Earth's surface. Is that problem because we are asking the orbital velocity. By definition, orbital velocity is to start with the, those satellites very close to Earth's surface. Okay. But here we are starting some uh, satellites may not be very close to Earth's surface. So we just, and by the way, that's why we want to calculate the height. If it's very close to Earth's surface, the height is simply zero, right? There is no need to calculate it. Now, what am I going to do? We're going to calculate the R and subtract the Earth's surface. That will be the height for the 
good bad luck. Okay. And but here the problem is that if we want to tackle R, we don't know the velocity. If we want to tackle the velocity, we don't know the R. And that's the two point that we want to tackle here. What are the speed and what altitude are these uh, bad luck? So we need to find another information to help us to do the calculation. Okay, let's see what kind of information we can get. So what do you think the key information will come from? This is not just arbitrary deadline, right? For arbitrary deadline, we cannot calculate. This is called the geosynchronous deadline. What's special about it? <coughs> it rotates in the same pace with the Earth. And so we do know the rotation velocity of the Earth, right? Okay? Do we know that? Okay. It takes, uh, how much time does it take for the Earth to rotate one circle? One circle. 24 hours, right? <laughs> uh, did you talk about 365 days? No, that's the Earth's rotation about the sun. Okay, you have to talk about the rotation of the Earth about its own axis. 24 hours. And this 24 hours, you remember, by definition, is the period of the Earth, right? And so, since this is uh, satellite is synchronous, synchronized, or uh, in the same pace with the Earth's rotation, so that means this is also the period for the satellite. So they it give us one of the important information about the satellite. This satellite is special because it has a period exactly 24 hours. Now, let's go further. How, how this information can help us? Remember how the period is related to the velocity? Right? So, 2 pi is constant. R is the quantity we want to find. V is the quantity we want to find. So now we have two equations. 1 and 2. This equation together will enable us to solve the problem, right? Two unknown quantities, two equations, that's a solvable problem. Okay. Let's go a few more steps. Uh, the most, uh, the best way to solve it, let's see what's the best way to solve it. Uh, we can write V as 2 pi R over T, okay? And substitute this into equation 1. Okay, we saw this is from equation 2. We can solve V and then substitute it into equation 1. So we get G M E divided by R equals to V squared. So 2 pi R over T squared. Right? And then we get G M E over R equals to 4 pi squared R to the cube of uh, R to the power of 2 divided by T squared. Okay. And then you are going to get, if you rearrange this equation, G M E divided by 4 pi squared over, okay, here, and T squared to here equals to r to the power of 2, right? Any question here? 
and then R is simply this number, gravitational constant, universal gravitational constant, mass of the Earth, the period of the Earth, and pi is a geometrical constant. So you can solve it to get R, right? And once you have R, substitute this into the velocity, so you get V equal to 2 pi over T multiplied by R, which is this quantity, right? Okay. Any question for the calculation? I'm not going to grab the number here. Okay. Any question here? But uh, here I would like to emphasize that T, can you use 24 for the period T? Can you use 24 for the period T? <coughs> Is this a standard unit? No, you need to convert it to seconds. You have to convert it to seconds. Basically, it should be 24 multiplied by 60 times. Good. Yeah. Seconds, right? This is period in seconds. So, to get the right answer, you have to use this number instead of 24. And so this is the radius and the velocity. And you can see now why we say there is only one. Uh, oh, by the way, nothing. This is the radius. If you want to calculate the height or the altitude measured from the Earth's surface, what we should we do? You should subtract the radius of the Earth. R, subtract uh, H equals to R subtract R e, the Earth radius, right? That's the quantity asked in the problem. Okay, from this equation you can see why you have only one radius or the height can have the synchronized uh, satellite because you ask the period the same as the Earth period, so it's fixed. So then it will fix the radius. If you change the radius, then the period will change. Then it will not be 24 hours okay, for one side. So there is a relationship between the period and R. And by the way, this equation is actually uh, Kepler's third law of uh, planet motion. Okay. Kepler has discovered this law uh, uh, from the observation, astronomical observation, before Newton can do this calculation. But th at that time, it's an empirical equation. There is no justification for that. 